Good afternoon, everyone. Out of Shabbat, Yosef Aliyah here, your fellow Mideast American. <laughs> As we approach Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that commemorates the uh, exodus of the ancient Israelites out of the slavery and bondage of Egypt and all that that represented, we think about the unleavened bread, bread which lacks leavening, which we eat during this holiday, and which, whether Christians are aware of it or not, they also commemorate in an indirect manner every time they participate of communion, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist. All of these are explicitly, explicitly, tied to and based on the Passover holiday. In Jewish tradition, in the biblical tradition, um, the going seven days with unleavened bread, it's a reminder to us that in order to preserve our freedom, our liberty, we have to remove the leavening from what gives us sustenance, from what we live on. And the leavening, that which makes the bread puff up, it's traditionally interpreted as sinfulness. The puffing up being the epitome of real sinfulness. In the book of Leviticus, we see that God does actually distinguish between different types of sins. There are some fundamental differences, big differences, between a sin which was done inadvertently by accident. You accidentally slipped on ice, and in doing so, you you fell and hit someone. All right? Though hitting someone is a sin when you do it inadvertently, that is night and day different from when you intentionally hit someone. <laughs> Should be something that goes without saying. So the leavening that we remove from our lives, that, that we should strive to remove from our lives, the sinfulness, it's especially uh, in regard to sin that puffs up, arrogance, haughtiness, Stubbornness. Stubbornness is tied to arrogance. These are the things that hold us back from drawing closer to each other, having a peaceful society, a happy society, and also what holds us back from drawing closer to God. I was reminded today when talking to a dear friend that one of the most pervasive I would call hidden acts of arrogance, hidden leaven, hidden hametz that is found all over the world in various different cultures and religions and even in the scientific community. It's the leavening, the, the haughtiness of blind faith in those we highly esteem, blind faith in the establishment. Blind faith in consensus. There are those that, while recognizing that there is fallibility in the establishment, in consensus, they then throw the baby out with the bathwater and this, they just totally disregard the value that there is in having some degree of trust of faith in people who know more than we ourselves do. But then you have the other extreme where people live in denial of the fallibility of those we highly esteem. And as with so many things in this world, the right path is the middle path. The extremes are often reflections of each other, leading to the same negative consequences. It's just as bad 
has the same consequences when we blindly follow our leaders unquestionably as if they are infallible and inerrant. That can have the same consequences and very often does as those who recognize their fallibility and just completely disregard them altogether. In the religious world, this often boils down to the extremely un the extremely immature unintellectual approach that my rabbi or my pastor my priest my imam he taught me xyz and you're not my imam so i'm going to trust him. i'm going to trust my imam you're not my pastor my pastor knows more than you because he's my pastor the most obvious circular reasoning. <laughs> I'm going to trust the science because you're not a scientist. I'm going to trust the rabbis because you're not the rabbis. Yeah, when in doubt, when you know that you lack information, you trust your rabbis, trust your imam, trust your priests, your preachers, your scientists trust the science. But when you have <laughs> mountains of evidence screaming that those you trust are in error, then your reasonable trust in them becomes a haughty and arrogant blind faith. And it is blind faith Blind faith that the Torah, the law of Moses, the foundation of the biblical text, ultimately came to destroy. It's the essence of idolatry. Belief in an empty thing. Blind faith. Yes, faith is good. Faith which leads to positive action. But that's a faith that is not blind. It's a reasonable faith. It's important to make that distinction. Baruch Hamabdil bin Qodash Lahol. Blessed is he who distinguishes between the holy and the profane.